I'm guessing many of you have likely heard of Ivan Milat, quite possibly one of the most notorious Australian criminals. If you haven't, then I shall give a brief summary, as this case will be focusing on somebody else. Ivan Milat was found guilty of murdering two men and five women in Australia between 1989 and 1992. The bodies were discovered in Balangalo State Forest, a 9,400 acre wood in New South Wales. Ivan is often referred to as the backpacker killer due to his victims being backpackers. It is also believed that he killed many more people, although he did proclaim his innocence till the day he passed away from cancer aged 74. What some people don't know is that Ivan had a great nephew named Matthew, and Matthew idolised his great uncle. He had plans to make the family name even more notorious than it already was. This case takes place in New South Wales, Australia, on the 20th of November, 2010. Matthew Millman was born in December of 1993, and as I said earlier, was the great nephew of Ivan Millat. Those who knew Matthew would later say that he would often brag to people about who his uncle was, and would even tell them shortly after meeting them. He would also enjoy going to the Balangalo State Forest, so he could look at the memorial dedicated to the victims, taking pride in what his uncle had done. After the murders of Ivan came to light, a number of his family members decided to change their last names as to no longer be associated with such a twisted individual. Matthew, on the other hand, was disappointed that he didn't share the name, so he changed his second name to Milat. Many people who knew of Matthew were of course very wary of him, but despite being a rather unsavoury individual, Matthew did have some friends and hung around with a group of lads, and one of these lads was 16 year old David Occiolone. David was described as a popular young man who could on occasion be a little too trusting of people that he should be wary of, and Matthew was one of those people. David's grandma recalled a time when she saw an altercation between David and Matthew outside her home. She ran out and told Matthew to leave. Matthew walked up to her, got in her face, and tried to intimidate her before turning around and leaving. She said that after this, on a number of occasions, Matthew would drive past her house in an attempt to scare her. But as I said, David could be a little too trusting, so he and Matthew made up shortly after this. And now, we arrive to the 20th of November, 2010. This day was David's 17th birthday. He woke up that morning and spent the day with his mother and grandparents. He had a couple of beers with his grandfather and enjoyed some birthday cake. Later on into the afternoon, David had plans to meet some of his friends. These friends were Cohen Klein, Chase Day, and Matthew Malat. The four went to grab something to drink and smoke. Matthew then told the group that they should all go to the Balangalo State Forest so the police wouldn't be able to stop them from drinking. And so they did. They all got into a car and began driving to the forest. The plan was to go and enjoy some drinks together to celebrate David's birthday, but Matthew had a far more sinister plan. That night, David didn't come home. At the time, he was living with his grandparents. They were concerned about him and tried to contact him. But when he failed to come home in the following days, they contacted the police and reported David missing. However, it wouldn't take long to find out what exactly had happened. On the 22nd of November, Chase Day spoke to his father. He told him that something truly horrific had happened to David and that he needed to come clean. His father brought him into the station and he began talking with investigators. Chase told them that Matthew had killed David in an incredibly cruel and brutal way. The story he told goes as follows. On the 20th, the four drove into the forest in Matthew's car. Once in the forest, Matthew got out of the car and walked towards the boot. He then shouted for David to come out and join him at the rear of the car. Chase then recalled hearing David scream. Matthew had hit David in the ribs with a large, double-sided axe. He witnessed David run around the car away from Matthew, who was still wielding the weapon. David pleaded with Matthew not to harm him, but he didn't want to listen. Chase then got out of the car and pleaded with Matthew to stop hurting David. 
but he was powerless to stop him. Matthew turned around and began to swear at him, telling him to get back into the car and mind his own business. Matthew got David onto the ground and began toying with him. He made him lie down face into the dirt and accused him of talking about him behind his back. As David pleaded with Matthew, he swung the axe down upon him a number of times. After killing him, Matthew dragged his body into the bush to hide him. After hiding the body, Matthew got back into the car with Chase and Cohen and proceeded to drive home. Chase recalled Matthew being incredibly excited at what he had done. Matthew told them that killing David was such a rush for him. Shortly after this horrific confession, both Matthew and Cohen were arrested and brought into the station for questioning. Meanwhile, a search team was set out to find David. It didn't take them long to find his body. David's grandparents were then tasked with identifying David's body. Cohen was questioned, and right away he tried to play the victim. He said he did indeed witness the crime taking place, but that he was terrified of Matthew and could do nothing to stop him. The investigators weren't quite convinced of his innocence. His home was searched, and there they found a mobile phone. This device was soon to be searched. Meanwhile, Matthew was also being questioned, but he refused to speak and just said, no comment. His home was also searched, and there they found a pair of shoes that had blood on them. These shoes were later tested, and it was confirmed that the blood was David's. Both Matthew and Cohen were charged with murder, and Chase was charged as an accessory. The mobile that was found in Cohen's home was thoroughly searched, and on it, the police found a deleted file. The file was recovered, and it turned out it was a recording of the final moments of David's life. They found out that Matthew taunted him for some time before killing him, reveling in David's fear and accusing him of things that he had never done. They also found that Chase was telling the truth. While Cohen filmed what was happening, Chase did try to stop it. He begged Matthew to stop hurting David, but this resulted in Matthew becoming angry. As long as Matthew had the axe, Chase could do nothing, so he just got back into the car as he was told. An extract from the recording recovered from Cohen's mobile phone goes as follows. Matthew, look at the dirt. Don't look at me, look at the dirt. David begins to cry. Matthew, keep looking at me and I'll cut your head off. Look at the ground. Tell me, is it true you've been going around telling people about my affairs? David, it's not true, Matt. Matthew, shut up. Put your hands down next to your face. Are you going to keep meddling with me? David, no I won't, I swear to God. Matthew, how do I know that? David, we've been mates for ages. My word is good. I swear to God to you, dude. I never said anything about you. Matthew, I really don't believe you, all right? David, man, I give you my word. I would not. Matthew, yeah, you've given me your word, and your word isn't good enough. It's after this exchange that the sound of the axe hitting David's head can be heard, and then the recording ends. The murder and the 15 minutes leading up to it was hauntingly captured on an audio recording from Cohen's mobile phone. David was being submissive the entire time and tried his best to defuse the situation. Following this revelation, the charges against Chase were dropped and he was asked to give evidence at the trial, to which he agreed. Before the trial would take place, the investigators recovered the murder weapon from a body of water inside the forest. Matthew was also evaluated by a mental health professional. It was found that he suffered from no conditions that would have caused him to commit such a horrific crime. The trial began, and it's said that Matthew showed little emotion and just kept his head down. It's one of the most notorious names in our criminal history. Now, the Millat family has another killer in its ranks. Matthew Millat, a relative of Ivan the serial killer, killed a mate in the Belanglo State Forest, the same place his uncle tortured and executed seven backpackers. Today, for the first time, we can show you the face of teenage murderer Matthew Malat. 
Cohen Klein is his mate and both have pleaded guilty to the axe murder of their one-time friend, David Octoloni. David's family fronted court today as a judge decides the penalty for the killers. It was David's birthday, November 20 in 2010, when Milat and Klein lured him into the Belangolo State Forest, the same killing fields used by Matthew's uncle, Ivan Milat. Both Matthew and Cohen were found guilty of murder. No motive for what happened was found. It just seemed that Matthew wanted to kill. Matthew was sentenced to 43 years in prison. He has since tried to appeal his sentence, but so far he has been unsuccessful. Cohen was sentenced to at least 22 years with a maximum 32 year term. He too has appealed his sentence and he was successful. His sentence was reduced from 32 to 27 years. When speaking about the horrific murder of David, his grandfather said, They didn't just kill him, they tormented him. The love I have for David and the hatred I have for those animals who took him away, they deserve no mercy. What is incredibly eerie about this case is that during the sentencing hearing, it was revealed that Matthew had written poems during his time in custody. One poem, called Your Last Day, goes as follows. Click clack, hear that, stopping in the middle of the track. Are you getting nervous in the back? You should be, you're getting whacked. Talk shit here, talk shit there, no one's really gonna care but talk shit with every breath, you just signed away your health. I can see you start to sweat, wondering what you're gonna get. Hoping for one in the head, I'll put one in your leg. Tell me, are you having fun? Get up and start to run. How far are you gonna get? Your match you have just met. Stumbling all over the place, hear the crunch of leaves and feet, your heart will skip a beat. Are you gonna get away? No hope kid, this ain't your day. The day that you won't be found, six feet underneath the ground. Matthew takes a great delight in the crimes he had committed, and is now referred to as the Copycat Millat. A video on Ivan Millat is soon to come. <laughs>